I'll be able to move this longer. Go a little far back, don't we? And an exhibition. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Do we have any, yeah, would you guys can join us when we get a second? Can you say Oh, I'm Jeffrey, I'm the director here. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so, yeah, so it's such an a, a amazing uh, occasion. This is the 50th anniversary of Woman House, um, the seminal project that um, Judy uh, Chicago spearheaded back in 1972. And um, we're super, super excited to have Nancy Udelman here, who not only was a student of Judy's early on, um, but she also was a very important part of that initial project and the current project. Um, that's taking place tomorrow, right? And oh, well, not quite in two weeks. Oh, in two weeks, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I told you I would do this. Um, co I had COVID a couple of, like, a month ago, and things get twisted around, so you'll just have to know that and be okay with that. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, uh, so we were thrilled to kind of do in honor of that uh, original exhibition, our own interpretation, including Judy, including Nancy, and multiple other artists. Mocha Leger is here, stop right over here. Um, uh, one of our uh, local artists as well. Um, and so um, it's just a really great occasion to really celebrate and, and, and support um, all of that that's happened. Um, uh, Nancy uh, has an amazing career all her own. She was also you taught for, what, 20 years, right? Yes. Um, at, remind me again. Well, I, at uh, Fresno State, at State. what's actually called California State University. Right. Fresno. Yeah. I call it Fresno State. There you go. That's what I call <laughs> <laughs> um, Is it okay if you can face? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Of sorry. course. Um, so anyways, I'll, I just want to keep this kind of short because we all really want to hear what Nancy has to say about all these wonderful stories, but, um, but she's extremely accomplished in her own right. Um, she also has uh, works in public collections uh, such as the, the Brooklyn Museum um, and SF MoMA and uh, now MoMA. Yes. So, um, so we're super excited to have her here. I do want to say a quick thank you to our wonderful staff here that helped get all of this in order um, very, very quickly with a really fast turnaround, so thanks to you guys. Um, and then also, um, I don't want to forget, Mocha has, <coughs> excuse me, um, a, a brand new book out um, that is uh, documenting her exhibition at the, Cat, uh, the Cats and Art Center. Um, so we're super, super happy to be able to premiere that book. We have a stack of them over on this side and she'll sign them for you if you guys are interested in, in, uh, in grabbing one of those before you go. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our wonderful superstar guest, uh, Nancy Udelman. And she'll talk about all kinds of fascinating things, and then afterwards, you guys can go ahead and ask questions. You know, it's really interesting the way you pronounce my last name, because oh. that is the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Okay. Udelman. Okay. That, and all our relatives on the East Coast, Udelman, but for some reason, when I was at little tiny kid, my mother changed the pronunciation to Yodelman. Oh. But which, my which sis, do you prefer? Well, I guess I prefer what I've always known, uh -huh. which okay. is Yodelman. Okay. But my sister, who now lives with me, was on the East Coast, and because of all the relatives back there, she changed the pronunciation. Okay. So she's, you know, we introduce her, so she's Rachel Yodelman, right. and I'm Nancy well, I, I'm thrilled to be here because it's so exciting to me and talking about 50 years ago and even I'll talk about 52 years ago is wonderful for me because I never would have thought back then that I would be doing this now. I mean, literally. And when, even when I was working on Woman House, and we started the November of 71, it was open for the month of February in 72, I never would have thought it would be so successful and would still be talked about today. So jumping back a little bit, I want to jump back to the spring of 1970. I was living in Fresno. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I always had this idea the world was going to blow up 
any day anyway. <laughs> I mean, I kind of don't think that anymore, or maybe I don't care anymore. But at the time, I knew I wanted to do something important, but I didn't know what it was. And I used to think I wanted to be a writer, but I didn't really write. So you have to write to be a writer. But one day I was taking art classes. It seemed like I would take whatever boyfriend I had at the time, I, that's the classes I'd take. I had a boyfriend in the English department, so I'd take English poetry writing. And then I'd take theater classes because of a boyfriend. And it, but I took a lot of costume and makeup classes, which later really helped in my artwork. So I'm really glad of that, but I was like this sort of leaf blowing in the wind. And then one day I saw this notice on the, just pinned up in the hallway. It said, women interested. And I remember it saying in taking an all women sculpture class, no one else remembers it that way, not even Judy, she was gonna teach the class. It said, sign up here. And so I signed my name. I thought, oh, this sounds good. <clears throat> and we had to be interviewed. It, everything about it was totally um, different. We had to be interviewed, women only, and we ended up renting our own studio space, which wasn't done in 1970. So, <clears throat> but the day I was supposed to be interviewed, someone had called in a phony bomb scare. The people, it was like protesting, whatever was around to protest, but people would do that, students would do that, call in bomb scares, and the school would have to be cleared. But I eventually got interviewed, and I remember meeting this young woman. She wasn't a whole lot older than me, but very, like, very confident. Her name was Judy Garowitz, and she said to me, do you want to be a professional artist? And I said, I already am an artist. And she said, no, you're not. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I never, ever have met anyone like that. No one had ever talked to me like that before. And I kind of have to say, I really haven't met anyone like that since. <laughs> because that same, and so she, I guess, approved me somehow. And the class started in the fall of 1970. We rented this 5,000 square foot building that was the old community theater in Fresno. She taught us how to build a wall with sheetrock. We built a 40 foot wall. She taught us how to carry it. She was really tough. And she wrote this play that I couldn't even say the words at the time. That's how, how I was. But it's called the Cock and Cunt Play. And it's actually when it's being revived for the new woman house. And it's kind of these, these almost like marionettes. So will you help me do the dishes? And then the, a male and a female. And she made us, she wrote it as an exercise, kind of like assertiveness training. And she had us do that over and over and over. And I remember I had really so much trouble doing the male part. She would make us switch. And she was, you know, kind of, I guess, I hate to word the use, use the word Nazi, but <laughs> she was, you know, she was more demanding than anyone I ever knew. And what I'm grateful for is that I truly believe she saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And she encouraged me. Because one night, a, my, a friend who was also in Judy's class, we decided to just dress up and put makeup on, and we had a little Instamatic camera, and we were snapping pictures. And, and I was afraid to show them to Judy, because I thought she would just flip out and say they were sexist or whatever. But we showed them, and she loved them. And she said, you need to really focus on this and you know you need backdrop paper you need better costumes you need to really whatever and so we ended up doing this whole series we i i think we just call them images of women and they've been in a lot of books they've been shown in france they've been all over i mean they were you know us costumed it was 1970 or actually that was 71 and i kind of cindy sherman but way before or Cindy Sherman, anyway. But it was, it was a, such an exciting time that first year because we were finding this new art and there were, some of the women were actually using 
doing painting with cow's blood. I mean, it was really pretty, some of it was pretty raw. They would go to a slaughterhouse and get these, I, I couldn't stand the smell being around it, but, but it was like this new, exciting thing. So when Judy, right in the middle of it, she changed her name to Chicago and got, a, it's a famous ad in art forum, like I hereby, to, you know, whatever, get rid of all male, whatever. And um, she was, looked really tough. She had this bandana tied around her head. Um, but when she found out she could um, work with Miriam Shapiro at Cal Arts. Miriam Shapiro was an artist and her husband, Paul Brock, they were part of the New York, um, what was it called, abstract expressionism movement. They had moved to San Diego, then they were hired by Cal Arts. And they, um, so they, Miriam had come to visit and she had me dress her up. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it's a wonderful image of her as a Victorian lady in black and white with a thick lace fan. And, <clears throat> but Judy and Mimi, she always wanted us to call her Mimi, decided to have an official feminist art program at CalArts. And so about half of Judy's first class, there were 15, so about nine of us decided to apply to CalArts and be part of that. And so the nine of us, some of them went into the women's design program, like Suzanne Lacey was one, who's now an international amazing artist. But our first project at CalArts was Woman House. And how it came about, <coughs> excuse me a minute. I don't have COVID, I test almost every day and it's always negative, but I just have a cough. Let me take a drink of water. There. So at, at CalArts, it was a brand new building. I don't know if anyone knows this. California Institute of the Arts, which started in 1971 in the fall, was funded by Walt Disney. It was funded by money from his will. But he was gone, but his brother Roy Disney was kind of on the board or whatever, but, but the building wasn't finished yet. So we were ready to start school in the fall. We didn't have the big studio that was promised because it wasn't finished. And Paula Harper was an art historian that Judy and Mimi had them hire. A feminist. She was a true feminist art historian in 1971. She suggested, she said, why don't you just find, a, find an old abandoned house and fix it up and you know, invite people to come look, and that's really how it started. So we broke up into groups, and the house was this incredible building. It was a big two-story, built in 1900. It was very solid, but it was slated to be demolished. And it actually was demolished after we were done. It was torn down, not a scrap left. But when we got it, you know, we just got permission from the owner it had like 52 broken windows. We replaced all of them. That's the first couple of months was just backbreaking work. There was no running water, no working toilets. So, you know, it was eight hours a day. And I remember um, I was used to that kind of work because I felt like I'd been through boot camp with Judy. <laughs> and then people who know Judy know what I'm talking about. But some of the women who, young women who came from New York City, you know, kind of, Judy used the word privileged. You know, I don't know that they were or not, but they were just not used to that kind of work because there was a lot of whining and complaining. But we had to get the house in shape before we could even begin our projects. And I just had, I have, I have really clear memories of certain things and then other things are a little foggy as it was 50 years ago, but I love being at that house. I love old houses, and I used to, it seems like in the past there were a lot more empty, abandoned houses, not so much, not in Los Angeles anyway because of the property value, but I used to like to find them and just wander through because I like the interior space. But anyway, so Woman House, when it actually opened, it was, 
I think it opened on like the 31st of January, but then it was the month of February, open to the public, which everyone knows February is a short month. There were over 10,000 people who came. It was beyond all of our expectations because Gloria Steinem came. And I really believe Anais Nin, the writer, had come. I know she came later to the Women's Building, but I think I remember seeing, she was a mentor of Judy's writing in their tour. So, you know, it was, it was mind-boggling. There was a Time Magazine article that was titled Bad Dream House. And, you know, people were just kind of stunned and shocked, and especially by Judy's menstruation bathroom, because it was, I remember, then the, there's a film, and there's a film, in the film, a group of men talking, saying, oh, I think that woman really had a problem. <laughs> 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 I have no idea, but, you know, anyway, at least back then, maybe it's still like that, I don't know. So, after Woman House, I, and I was physically exhausted because we worked really hard all day, I had two jobs, I worked in the library at the school at night, on the weekend I was a fry cook all day, Saturday and Sunday, and it was a dollar thirty-five an hour, it was, you know, it's kind of barely enough. It paid my rent, and I had to scrape by and didn't eat much. I didn't have time to eat anyway, so anyway. <laughs> but, but it was the most incredible. I think when you get pushed that hard, that afterwards, what I really wanted to do more than anything was develop a work that was entirely my own. And that's how, I feel, really feel that's how my artwork came about because I decided I want to make things, I want to make things that exist in space that are not going to be torn down or not going to be fleeting like a performance. So I started, I decided to make a dress and cover it with buttons and then I made a lot of like the objects you see in here, the hair pillow, I made a whole bunch of those pillows, all different things. Um, and that's human hair too. On the, and then the button and the button dress, and I did a lot of those with pins. And then I just kind of, I remember the 70s, all the rest of the 70s as being a completely focused time. And ever since, really, but especially the 70s that I was just completely into creating stuff. And that was, that meant so much to me, anyway. And so now, <coughs> Here I am again, uh, 50 years later, I'm in Berlin. Well, actually, last, this goes back to last November. Last November, Judy called me. And whenever I, I see Judy's name on my phone, I know it's important, because she doesn't just call and say, oh, what's happening? <laughs> oh, you always, I've got to answer. So I answered it, and she asked me, she said, we're, Through the Flower is going to do uh, like a 50-year commemoration of Woman House by, by doing a new 2022 Woman House and would I be interested in coming to Berlin, New Mexico to be a facilitator working with the artists. And right away I just said yes. And I remember her saying, you can bring your dog. And then I thought, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, I have a very energetic dog who's actually caused me all a lot of injury, <laughs> including this. So, but anyway, but you know, I was, but ever since I've been so excited, and Megan Malcolm Morgan, who's right there with a rainbow, <laughs> she is the executive director of Through the Flower, which is Judy's foundation, if you don't know that. It, Judy started it way back in the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. 1970. 1977, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. Anyway, so, um, so Megan Malcolm Morgan is, is in charge of all things, all things Woman House 2022, and even donated the house that we're using. So it's, um, what can I say about it? It's, well, there are 19 artists from New Mexico. I think there were maybe about 100 proposals, and then they were, you know, looked at, I was also honored to be one of the jurors. 
and then Judy, of course, and her husband Donald, and Tanya Turner Carroll was one of the jurors also. And um, so we picked 19 artists who are now feverishly working. Quite a few of them are here, as I can see. Um, and so they're, they're, how would, I guess I'd describe it, well, for one thing, it includes, it's across the gender spectrum. Woman House 50 years ago was only women, and mostly a lot of people have complained that, oh, well, it was all white women. You know, they'd say, always say that. But, you know, it was a private art school. It was super expensive, and it was whatever year it was, you know, a long time ago. But, but today, so I'm really excited about this project and really honored to be a part of it. So I'm trying to think of what, so the opening, there's an exclusive preview opening on June 17th that is, you know, it's a donation of $250 for that. There'll be um, historic performances, including me, and then also on the 18th will be the grand opening. But um, there's tickets available, I think it's, um, Womanhouse2022.com is the website. And it's on Facebook. What's that? It's also on Facebook. Yeah, the, oh, a Facebook, yes. Facebook. Facebook. Yes. There's a Facebook page. Yes. Yes, there's a Facebook page. There's also Instagram. Yes. Um, Woman House. But you know, there have been, over the years, there have been different commemorations of Woman House. But this 50 year, I think, is so important. And I'm just so glad to be here and be part of it. And I'm not sure if you have questions or comments or anything anyone would like to say. So, yes. Yes. Can you talk about some of your pieces that are on display right now? Oh, yes, okay, well, the two bronze Can you shoes. Oh, talk about okay. some of my pieces that are on display. Thank you. You're Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. The, I'd like to talk about the two bronze shoes. I love working in bronze, although, of course, I work in a lot of different materials. But the shoe I'm most proud of is the one called Bouquet, because I didn't even know if that would work. I got it high heel shoe, or filled it with plaster to make a base. And then I started group gluing dried flowers on it. You know, wispy dried flowers, and I was coating them with glue because I wanted to have a rubber mold made of that, of dried flowers. If anyone who knows anything about casting, it's like a complete challenge, anything that's thin or has undercuts or whatever, but there's, an excellent mold maker and has a guy who has a foundry named Lester Harris, who lives out in the country not far from where I live. It's a little town called Sanger where he lives. I live in Clovis, California. But he was able to create a mold and, and then it seemed after it was done I didn't want to put a patina on it so it's hand painted with acrylic paint. It's called, they call it polychrome bronze. And then the other one, the other shoe, it was just like, let's make a shoe so you could never wear it. Wrap it I wrapped it with beads, beaded necklaces. Oh, you know, I could talk also about Captive, which is the, mm -hmm. the piece on the wall with tin types. If you look closely at it, they're all tin types of men. And I don't usually I didn't usually use images of men, but I thought, you know, I had a lot of tin, tin, tin types, and the more I looked at them, they really stood out to me, the men's faces, and you know, thinking back, they're, they're all dead, well, a long time ago, but putting them on that kind of bustier shape, that very female shape, all these men embedded on, it just seemed right. Usually how I work in my studio is I have tons of materials around. I have big tables now. I have to use a chair. But I just scatter things out, and, and it's almost like the materials tell me what to do. So that's usually how I work. I don't often start. I mean, sometimes I start out with an idea, but 
often not. <laughs> okay. Any more questions from you guys or comments? Anybody that's involved, I think it would be really fascinating to hear what you know about the original Woman House and how it's been um, kind of reimagined um, in you know in its current form. <laughs> Yeah. Would we mind if the artists just like went behind Nancy that are part of Woman House so oh. people can see who they oh, are? Oh, yes, yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 anybody that's the, involved in that. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> on the current <laughs> Woman House. Yes. Yeah, and I also, I also want to mention there are two people here who worked on the dinner party. Joanne Garcia, who just came in. Oh, fantastic. Oh, and, but I think Julia Myers is not here. She was parked in the loading zone. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Julia, but, but there were, uh, so yeah. Joanne, who's a very good person, good to see you, but she worked with Judy on the dinner party. Right. Yeah. Um, and I just want to take a moment to say that um, these are artists and performers, so along with 19 artists from across the gender spectrum, we also have nine new, we have three historic performances and nine new performances that have been directed by Judy Chicago, um, including the reimagining of the Cock and Cup play with yes. two men who are both here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, hilarious. <laughs> yes. So um, I just kind of want you to see the faces of Woman House 2022. Yeah, thank you. Uh, because as you can see, they represent um, not only across the gender.